Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Each day does get sweeter and sweeter and better and better in the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to continue, uh, you know, going down the path of where we've kind of been for a while. I I guess, really, when you think about it, uh, our walk with God is a journey. And uh, every day is a new day. You know, every actual day that we live in is a new day. But what God's trying to get you and I to come to that understanding that uh, with Him, you know, there's, there's no day or night and things aren't separated by time and all the, those things that we, you know, we mark our lives with. Well, God's trying to get you and I to, uh, to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. Because when we live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, our lives will really be spiritual. Amen? And this is what God's really after. And, and, and uh, I, think, I think that we have to come to this realization. I, I mean, I think we know it, but we need to. You know, I, I was thinking about this. It, the, the Bible says this, that Abraham looked for a city. And God's people need to look for Him. The more we seek, the more we find. The more we find, the more we love. You know, and if we get to a point that we could change that, all four of those lines that we have there, the more I love, the more I love. The more I love, the more I love. The more I love, the more I love. Amen? Amen? This is what God's trying to get you and I. And, and we, we talked about this on Sunday, you know, and in, in, uh, one of the, I, I know I was really surprised I didn't go back and listen to it. It was an hour and 26 minutes long. But the only reason we even get concerned about time is because of our naturalness. Because if we really live in the Spirit, it won't mean a thing how long it took. And that our whole lives would be geared, oriented to Him. We would, as our earth would line up, right, with the sun. We would revolve around this. We have had a change of access. He's positioned. He's already overcome, right? He's already in the place that He's trying to draw you and I to. Amen? And so because of that, this is what God's after. This is what he seeks, right? Didn't we say this when, when uh, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well? I, I think we really need to come to this realization is that once we see the kingdom, the proof of that is it rearranges our life. Our vision, our speech, everything about our lives will change. One of the biggest troubles we have as Christians is is that we think we can come to Christ and hang on to the parts we like, never really understanding that God's trying to get you and I to separate. The walk with God is what? Through separation. What is God trying to separate us from? Ourselves. Ourselves. Amen? And and I think really when we talk, on Sunday, and we talked about this, where it said, uh, "Many are weak and feeble, and and uh, among you, and even some sleep." That we have to realize that, like these people were, you know, Christians. That he was talking this to. I mean, the Church of Corinth, they they understood. They they got deep revelation, right? Because Paul was their teacher and everything. But yet in the same token, there was something absolutely missing in their lives. Right? And really it's the heart of worship. Because the truth of the matter is worship. Right? Didn't I say, if you're thankful, that's beautiful. But it's only outer court. And I don't mean to belittle that by saying only outer court. But it's really, watch this, it's the entry point 
I I said this already, we enter his courts, his gates, right? His gates with thanksgiving. His courts with praise. Got a little mixed up. And what we are trying to get out of this whole thing is truly a lifestyle of worship. And it doesn't come by might and power. It comes by spirit. The Bible, the Bible, God gives us the Bible. His word is written down that we could search it out. But what we really need to search out while we're in the Bible, this is what Jesus said. He said, look, he says, you search the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life. He said, but you won't come to me because the scriptures, I I never really fully quoted it all the time. He says, because the scriptures testify of me. We have to find God. Not only in his word, but that his word can become flesh or life to you and I. Come on, Paul said he was caught up. He said, I don't know. I didn't even know whether I was in the body or out of the body. Spirit. And, and, and really the truth of the matter is when we talk spirit like this, because we, you know, you know, you know what really scares us? is like really the truth of the matter is we like to hang on to ourselves because we can be in control. God's trying to really get you and I to understand this is the whole point of trusting and having faith and all these kinds of things, right? Glory to God. So I I laid in bed yesterday morning, I think it was yesterday morning, and uh, uh, God has got me in this new mode where um, it's not new in this context that I... You wake up early and I pray, but um, there just seems to be this uh, um, this communion that's going on that maybe it's just sweeter and sweeter every day. It's better and better, and it's brighter and brighter, and 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 um, and so you know it's kind of funny. I I I heard the Lord say something to me, and and. Um, while I was praying and stuff. And so last night uh, I, when I sat down to read and stuff, I, I probably read for about three hours, I think, or two and a half hours. And, you know, and it was like I was just reading. It was like, it's just like I was eating and not, you know, I was just eating, right, you know. And, and all of a sudden the Lord reminded me of what he spoke to me. And I went and I read it and all of a sudden things started changing from that moment, you know. It's like, oh, God, I see what you wanted. And, and so I want to share that tonight. But, you know, his word is always ongoing, and, and we've been talking about this. You, we go all the way back to Ruth. It was a journey. It was a walk. And each level of that walk, there was a requirement of letting go of yourself and finding yourself in him. And this is what we're after in our lives. When, when, he, when, when, when Abraham says, I look for a city, I look for a people, that their whole life, nothing else, it was God. It was God. One of the issues we have today in the 21st century, especially here in the United States of America, whether it's in the church or out of the church, we live from a dimension of need. And the only reason we live from a dimension of need is because it's based upon self. Self. And God's trying to get us to get out of that dimension of need and just live In him we live, move, have our being. The very essence of our life is spirit. Amen? And this is what God is after. He's after this. So I have a lot. Never going to get done, but that's all right. I'll have to go fast if I want to get done. Uh, But I really begin to uh, ask the Lord, you know, you know, I, I always go back to this when, and it had to be, I don't know, 2001, 2002. I don't know, but you've heard me say it many times, but it it was like this, um, that the Lord had showed me when I asked the question about the birds, right? Remember, hey, why are them birds singing when it's dark out? 
And he said, because this, they're declaring a new day. The sun's coming up over the horizon. And I remember, I always say that part, but I, I don't say this too often. I do remember God's, I can still hear his words right now. He says, I want your voice to be like Noah and declare something new that has never happened before in the earth. And even though it's dark and it looks like nothing is happening in this dimension, be a voice. Be a voice, be a voice, be a voice. This is what God is after. And so I, I, I want to move in that part because I, I want, you know, in Isaiah it says, it says look, it says, look, we, we, we have child within us, they, they, right? He said, and the only thing that we've brought forth is wind or winds of doctrine. We talked about those, the contrary winds. It isn't that the, it isn't that the doctrine's bad or the winds are bad. It's, but it's, the whole point is it hasn't produced everything that God has desired. The truth of the matter is it's preach, we've preached a lot of good messages, and, and I'm not saying they're bad and, and nothing like that. That's... But what God is after is from a whole nother sphere, whole nother dimension. Those men and women, they lived their lives and they didn't even have a Bible for the most part, right? Amen. So if you turn with me to Genesis chapter 5, I, I like to. Genesis chapter 5. While you're turning there, you're just going to have to wait while you get there because now I want to read this because I think I hacked it. It says, I'm just going to read this in, in Isaiah 26. Like as a woman with child that draweth near to the time of her delivery, is in pain and crieth out in pain, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind, and this is what I really wanted to get to. And we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. I'm talking about full deliverance. I'm not talking about cycles where we... Look, the church keeps crying out for revival. The only reason we need revival is because we're dead. Oh, it's blasphemy, right, to say that. But the reality is why, our, why is our own speech betraying what our heart should be is the kingdom? Are you with me? Come on. We should be, look, if the church was that powerful in the first century, we should be that much more powerful 21 centuries later or 20 centuries later. Come on, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, built upon. But something always gets in the way. Since we've not brought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Okay, so turn with me. You, you guys already went there, I think. Genesis 5, right? Did I tell you Genesis 5? Okay, let me see. I have to find where I want to go now. I don't know if I wrote it down. I think it's like, yes. So if you read, if you read Genesis 5, and you look at it, and you'll see it, it has the lineage of Adam primarily. And, and let me say this to you. Not every single child that Adam and Eve had is listed in the Bible. Okay? Only the ones that pertain to what God's purpose and what he was doing. Look, even Cain... God used for purpose. Okay? He did. Esau, I mean, go through, if you want to go through that side of the fence, they were listed because God had purpose. Look, when men are evil, mankind, when mankind is evil, 
Right? God works what? They meant it for evil, but God means it for what? Good. He has a purpose in it, doesn't He? Because ultimately, God's purpose, because of the fall of Adam, God's ultimate purpose is full deliverance. And all the inhabitants, right? Everything that habitates in Adam has to do what? Fall. Has to come to an end. Okay? So, and, and so if you look at the lineage, it will, it will, it will run something like this. Uh, look in verse 27. Uh, no, verse 28. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 years. He had sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 years. And he died. Verse 28. And, and Lamech lived 182 years. Now look at this. And he begat a son. I think it's pretty cool. All of a sudden, it changes the wording. All Because all through it, it goes, so-and-so begat so-and-so. And so-and-so begat so-and-so. And so-and-so begat so-and-so. But all of a sudden it says here, and so-and-so begat a son. Everybody say this. God is after a son. Because of the fall, God will work his deliverance, his salvation, his full deliverance, his full salvation out through a son. He already gave us the very seed in Jesus, the Christ. He gave us that life, that whole new head of the family, a whole new dimension. It's all outside of Adam. It's now by spirit, and it's no longer by the natural man. Even though we see many times through the Old Testament, God gave us types and, and, and shadows and all those kind of things, examples, of what he's doing. He, he laid it all out for us. And, and like I'm glad we had real life illustrations. But they lived their real life illustration. Pointing to the real life. They looked ahead. We can in this context look behind so to speak. But the reality is in him we live. And move and have our being. But look at this. He said, and he begat a son. Everybody say, God wants a son. What father wouldn't? Are you with me? And verse 29. And he called his name Noah. Everybody know what Noah's name means? It means rest. I don't, I don't want to. Saying this. Now listen to this. And all the other ones, it just said he begat this one, he begat this one, he begat this one, and you know, and they lived this long, and then they died. They also had other children. And, but all of a sudden, and he called his name Noah, means rest, saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Okay? And Lamech lived and... You know, then he died and, and you know, everything. And then Noah had children, all right? Now turn with me to chapter 6. And it came to pass, just stay with me, I'm just going to read. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, uh, that they were fair and they took them, Wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Did you hear that? He's flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the Son of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old and of renown. Okay? Uh, renowned. And God saw, that if you, if you do a little study on that, you'll find out that they, they were men of old and they were renowned. They were like warriors and stuff like that. Okay? Here we go. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. 
and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I am created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and all the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Verse 8. Everybody say this. But. But. Are you with me? But. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. A son. Who will bring comfort. In the midst of all of the toil in the earth. Are you with me? Is everybody all right? Here we go. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just, and that means just, that, that means lawful or a righteous man. And I, there's a reason for I want to pick these words out. And perfect in his generations. And look at this. And Noah walked with God. Now, Noah came after Enoch. Are you with me? And we all know what happened with Enoch. Ne Enoch initiated a walk. His name means initiated. He initiated a lifestyle, didn't he? Until the true life Christ Jesus showed up in the earth and fulfilled every single thing in the law. Every type, every shadow, every example, every jot and tittle, every single thing Jesus the Christ fulfilled. Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right? Japheth. All right. Here we go. Here we go. The earth, everybody say the earth, was also corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Did you hear that? Now, I don't know about you, but like if I wanted to do some parallel stuff, you almost could apply this to the 21st century. And this was way back in the beginning of time. Are you with me? After the fall? But watch this. After the death, burial, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus the Christ. It's almost identical. Now, because of time, I don't have time tonight. i I got to get to my notes now. I'm going to read out of my notes. Right, so just listen to me. What did we talk about? The Lord says that we must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. No other way. And he seeks. I love this. I never caught this before. I was looking at it. It says, he seeketh such. The word such. What does it mean? Such as this. Well, what is this? This is that. In other words, there was action coming out of the disciples and out of the people in the upper room. And Peter said, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Such. The Lord seeketh such. Are you with me? 
who worship Him. He's not looking for weak, feeble. And a church that has fallen asleep that needs to be revived. See, we'll call for revival, but we'll get upset when someone tells us to wake up. When the reality is, look, revival means that somebody's dead. Yeah, all right. Here we go. A son named Noah to bring about the reality of God's grace. Noah, I, 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 you know, I, I can't really. Noah found grace in the eyes. What did he see? What did he see in God's eyes? See, I, I, I look at it the other way too, you know, like, like Noah found grace in God's eyes. But what did Noah see in those eyes that made him favorable to the Lord? Oh, he was a worshiper. Are you with me? Now watch this. The earth was corrupt, wasn't it? The earth, I wrote this down. The earth current condition right now, 21st century, is a direct result of the church's condition, current condition, with God the Father. The world and the church parallel one another. Are you with me? Now listen to me. I don't have time to go read all this. I'm just going to read a couple of them. What was man? Flesh. Carnal. Not just his body, but his thinking. And one of the problems we have in the church is when we see the words like wicked and evil, we get a view of what we see to the extreme out there, but that is just a result of what has gone on in here. You all right? Now listen. The word, uh, it's corrupt. It's wicked. It's evil, isn't it? The generations of Noah, Noah was a just and a perfect, he was a just man and perfect in his generations, right? Noah walked with God. He worshipped. Every step got sweeter and sweeter and better and better. You remember what God, remember what God said? This is, what, this is what he said, he says, the end days will be like the days of Noah. Well, what part of the story do you want to take? I got to get going. Dale's not here, but I could stay longer tonight. I was really tired, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm got, getting my energy. <laughs> Are you with me? Now, I thought it was really a coincidence. It just, you know, just... Pure luck this happened today, that it being the 21st of October, you know, the 21st, and so I had to read my Proverbs the 21st, you know. But watch this. I'm going to read a couple. The word wicked was found seven times in Proverbs 21 today. I'm not going to read all the verses, but I'll read a couple of them. But it's also found 12 times in chapter 10. Now, it's found in other chapters also because I think there's like 89 times in the book of Proverbs, period. And wicked, 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 wicked. It just really reflects moral badness. And if you want me to put a real term on it, it's carnality or flesh. Now, 
We make it out to be something really bad out there, but the only reason we can equate to or realize what that is, we need it as an example to understand how God views flesh and carnality in our lives. If you don't think so, watch this. I, I, I hope I can get to it. In Romans chapter 8, Paul wrote this down. This is what he said. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It cannot please God. And Christianity has been trying to please God with a carnal mindset, a carnal lifestyle. When all he's been trying to get you and I to do is worship him in spirit and in truth. And you have to, I have to, we have to do this. We have to walk this thing out day by day, one step at a time. There's a lot of Christians in the world. And you might not like this. But God has a first fruit company that also uses the same term called the elect. And the reason that we have so many winds of doctrine against these kind of messages is because they, you know what the word elect means, by the way? Favorites. And you might not like that. And it, listen, because all, do you want to know when it says, oh, I don't have time for it. Just go look and see. I, 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 was, I was thinking about this, you know. Do you know why God said, thou shall not lie? It wasn't that he was trying to get you and I not to say bad things or false things out of our mouths. What he was trying to really get you and I to understand was this. He doesn't want you and I to be a false witness. A lifestyle that lies to the truth. Are you all right? Now listen, wickedness. This is where, this, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, but listen to this. Here we go. Proverbs 10, verse 25. As the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Verse 30, the righteous shall never be removed. Remember when Jesus said this? He said, the end days would be like the days of Noah. He said, what happened? Who was left? The righteous. Come on, the wicked were swept away in the flood. Everything that was of flesh, he said, was wiped away in the flood. Now, I better throw this in here. Well, we're in the New Testament, and I've been born again. I got baptized in Jesus' name. I got cut off, circumcised, and I had him wash away everything out of my life. Absolutely fact. That's why he tells us what? Reckon yourself dead. Arise to newness of life. And look at the reason we still have the condition we have. Because, look. God started all over with eight people, only eight. And yet the earth parallels exactly the same. He, used, he baptized them, right? Every single one. So now every single person had an opportunity, right, to come clean, to change. Free will. God never violates. He never forces he gives every one of us our own choice to choose, doesn't he? Okay. I think it's pretty interesting that it was found 12 times, the word wicked. I, in the book, in chapter 10, 12 being the number, it's a governmental thing. Look, wickedness is a kingdom of darkness. Are you with me? Carnality is darkness. It is death. How do you know that, preacher? Flesh, carnality, and blood cannot 
inherit the kingdom. We wonder why sometimes that everything, why we're so weak and feeble and sleep have no ability or power to change the course of life where we live. We have a doctrine that satisfies our soul. Are you with me? But doesn't energize our spirit. And what God's trying to get you and I energized in is His Spirit. Because out of His Spirit, see, remember this? Remember when I read that stuff before? What what Bill Britton wrote, I don't know how many years ago. Look, when we read it, it says, oh, they they had terminology. They had the right words. They could quote Scripture. But they always wondered why nothing ever happened. It's what the Bible says. Because there was no substance. No spirit. Watch this. The letter killeth, even if it's the right letter. But the spirit giveth life to it. This is how the word could become flesh, because it was spirit and in truth. I got to get moving. Okay. Now listen to this. In chapter chapter 21 today, I want to look at it. Now, I, I want you to understand the f- verse 4. Proverbs 21, verse 4. Are you ready? A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of or by the wicked is sin. Did you hear that? So what is the wicked? What makes them wicked? Pride, arrogancy. Did you hear this? It's interesting. Verse 7 says, the robbery of the wicked, I'll do it my way. I'll come up another way. Is a what? A thief and a robber. Wicked. Are you all right? Now, it's interesting. Watch this. A high look, a proud heart, and the plowing. Now, that word plowing, go dig it out. You get down to the root of it, and it literally means to glisten. And when it says to glisten, it literally gives you and I a representation. Watch this, a light. I'm like, God, what in the world are you talking about here? Light. But do you remember when Jesus said that if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye be evil or double, double-minded, fleshly, carnal, then your light is what? Darkness. In other words, you won't make any inroads to bring deliverance and the inhabitants to fall. I got good news for you coming. Just, just hang with me. Look, I, I like to watch uh, rehab shows, you know, for houses and stuff. And, you know, they, every show has to do the same. Oh, it's demolition day. God is blowing it up. He says he's going to shake it to the only thing that can remain. The day of the Lord is revealed by what? Fire. You ever been around a really hot fire? A lot of things shake. They pop. They bounce. They, they move. The truth of the matter is what most people don't understand is this. The reason things are all shook up right now, it's no different than when Noah showed up. It was so cracked up, all corruption and wickedness. It was because it was producing or birthing a son. And the reason we're in an hour where it's so crazy, even the climate control people or the climate change people and all that, they, 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 their, their data and all this, the only reason even the earth is shaking and is not behaving like it always did is because not man's corruption and what he's polluting the earth, he's polluting the earth with the corruption that comes out of the heart and the mind. 
But the real problem isn't out there. The real problem is in here. That our carnality, the minute we begin to say, not me, thus deceiving ourselves. And it's, this is not, look, it is not condemnation for us, right? He said, look, in Romans 8, right off the bat, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, period, in the original. But a little portion of verse 4 is brought up to give the carnal people an understanding who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. The Holy Ghost had the King James writer interject that so that we wouldn't think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Because what God's trying to really do is to eliminate all the corruption put on the mind of Christ, mortify the deeds of the body, worship Him in spirit and truth, because this is how he will bring a full deliverance. A washing away of all the corruption and filth. I love this one. You ready for this? Forever this time. Never to be rejuvenated. Nothing coming out of the flood. The fire burns it all up. Are you with me? Are you all right? I have to get moving. So let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 6. What verse was I on? Verse 11. Verse 12. Verse 13. Are you there? So what did he say in 12? He said all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. What does flesh do? It corrupts his way upon the earth. And it doesn't matter if you're a new creation man or not. This is exactly why Paul, not Paul, but James said a double-minded man. You know, most people cannot distinguish, even in our circles, whether they're double-natured or double-minded. If you've been cut off, circumcised, born again, the Bible says, the Bible teaches us, you can believe whatever you want, but the Bible says you are a new creation. A new nature has taken place. Well, how come I still act like the old man? It's now got to die in every essence of its life. I thought it was already dead. Yes, but there's more to come. The problem is that everybody wants everything in black and white in that aspect, right? Okay, here we go. Now, verse 13. Now, are you ready? Are you with me? And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He's going to use the earth to do it. Remember, Abel's blood cries out. The blood constantly cries out. Blood cries out now. The whole globe the blood is crying out. Are you with me? Watch. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now listen to this. This is cool. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark. I go to prepare a place. Rooms. Remember that? In my father's house. You already know this. You've, you've been around long enough. You understand that the ark here is a picture of Christ, okay? I, I'm just going to lay it out there for you. And shall pitch it within and without. There's an atonement that place, takes place inside and out. Are you with me? Now watch this. Can I say this? Don't forget this. What is Noah doing? I want, you, I want to try and put it in some like real life terms. He is like 500 years old almost, right? He's had children. He has wives, a wife, and his children have wives. And, and it, well, I don't know if they have wives at this point. Uh, I'd have to go back and double check it. Okay, but listen. He now has to build an ark. Now listen to this. 
And he says, what did he tell him to do? Build rooms in it. Right? And pitch it. The word pitch literally means, it literally means to cover. Uh, it, it, it has, it means atonement. It means to cleanse. Cleanse it inside and out, right? Cover it. How many know the blood is covered? All right, here we go. Now let's verse 15. And this is the fashion. Now the word fashion is a cool word. Well, now we know what the word fashion is. If uh, Okay, but watch this. As a verb, what's a verb word? Action, right? It means make into a, particu a particular or the required form. Construct, build, manufacture, make, create, fabricate, contrive, uh, cast, frame. I like this one. Shape it. How many know we're being shaped? Yeah. Form until Christ be formed in you. Mold, sculpt, forge, hew, carve, widow, hammer, and chisel. Are you all right? Okay. God said to Noah, Oh, wait, jumped on me. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. And a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt shall thou set in the side thereof, with the lower, the second, and the third stories shalt thou make it. All right? The fashion thereof. You ready? 300 cubits. The cubits are not, it's not important. It's the 300. Now, we could turn this into another, convert it into other measurements. It comes out to 450 inches or, what, or feet or something. I can't remember what it is. It, it, all the, I, but it messes up. What God was trying to tell us right here. 300. Now, 300 is a magical number in the Bible. If I think of 300, I think about the 300 foxes that Samson tied their tails end to end, lit them on fire, and burned up the Philistines' field. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I think about Gideon's 300. And you can trace yourself through the Bible and find lots of 300s. And it really is a picture, really is a picture of resurrection life, hundredfold in all three dimensions. Spirit, hallelujah, soul, and body. Are you with me? What he's trying to get you and I to understand that the length of our lives should be resurrection life in the fullness. All right? And the breadth of it, 50 cubits. In other words, the depth of our lives should be totally free. He who makes, who he sets free is free indeed. What are we free of? The carnal. A release of no longer being tied to a natural life. Wow, you're preaching some crazy stuff. That alone is a mindset that needs to change. Freedom. We cannot be all talk and no depth. No breath to our life. Shallow. No, you have to be free. I need to be free. I still mark my words by, by who I'm talking to. Are you with me? And the height of it, 30 cubits. Now he just, 30 is the number of maturity, right? He just showed us a picture of what this is to look like. I go to the book of Revelation all the way to the end of this book, Bible, and I found out that this same description, different words, is the description of a man. Are you with me? Now watch this. 
a window. I like this word window. Everybody know it means literally means a light. That is a window, dual double light. I like that. It's noon. Okay. And he said, thou shalt put a window to the ark in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. In other words, it's basically like a skylight or maybe a window at the top. One window, one cubit down, right? This is what he's trying to get. One down. What he's really trying to get you and I to understand here, this window is the mind of Christ. It's a light. Come on. Enlighten the eyes of my understanding. What he's trying to get you and I to understand is this, that out of the mind of Christ, out of the realm of the Spirit, through this new man, this spiritual man, who has come alive, spirit, soul, and body, he's completely free. He's totally mature. No, no, no. Listen to me. Noah, walking for 120 years, day by day, step by step, it got sweeter and sweeter until all of a sudden the new man was fully alive. I don't have time for the rest of it, but look at what happened to it. When it was completely ready, God came and he said, I sweep everything away. He brought the waters on and where did this ark go? Just like Jesus walking on the water, right up on top of everything that was going on in the earth. Ah, oh, that's a good one, Lord. Oh, I didn't even think of it. All things were put under his feet. Walking on the water puts everything that is carnal under his feet. Are you with me? Now watch this. Do you see it? A window shalt thou make to an art? It'd be a cubit. A cubic one. There's only the, the, the mind of Christ is one. It's not double. But the cool thing about it is out of this single mind comes a double light. What does that mean? Oh, wait, it's a light above the sun. It's brighter than the sun. Here we go. A cubit thou shalt finish it above. He didn't say below. Watch this. And watch this. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, what did they do? They punched him in the side, right? They pierced his side. And what came out? Blood and water. Look, what they really did, what he's really saying. Here's what's in the side. It's the heart, the heart of God. The door, Jesus, is the heart of God. Are you with me? Come on, what was Noah doing? His walk was to build the Christ up in his life, day by day, until it was able to be lifted up above all the corruption, all the carnal, all, the, look, and you know what? I, I'm not trying to be mean or picking, but look, we as a church, not just as individual church, but the church world must get out of the realm of carnality or we will just end up like the rest, needing deliverance and needing revival. Really, the truth of the matter is the reason I'm even showing us this picture right now is this. Watch. It's a son. A son. A son who will bring deliverance in the earth. A man child. Amen? Okay, I don't have time for that. Okay, now listen to me. I, I want you to equate to this. Now, remember, Noah was what? A just and a perfect man. Now watch this. You ready? Here we go. What was he doing in his walk? He was worshiping God. By building the ark. He looked for a city. Same principle. He was looking for God. When he was building this ark, he was looking for God. The truth of the matter is, it wasn't so much about getting rid of the filth. It was he was looking for God. John the Baptist declared this. He must increase so that I decrease. In that order. I can't even decrease unless I'm looking for God. Hunger for God. When I'm hungry for God, man shall not live by bread alone, but I, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
See, Jesus was smarter than most Christians. Most Christians would have a message and they'll say this. They'll get bold and they'll say, this is what Jesus, no, Jesus said, look, at when the devil tempted him, he said, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. And he said, the Bible says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Singleness of mind wasn't about him. It was about the word of God becoming flesh in his life. Now watch this. Are you ready? Ephesians 4, you know this really good. Watch this. You can actually turn. He gave us apostles, prophets, right? He gave for what? For the perfecting. No, it was what? Perfect in his generation. I got to turn there. Hang on. Ephesians. I know I'm running late tonight and I got to get moving. Here we go. For the perfecting of the saints. I like this word perfecting. It means complete furnishing and completely thorough, okay, uh, of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till or until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect. I like the word knowledge too, by the way. Anybody want to guess what it is? It's epigenosco. Know him by relationship built upon, epi, upon relationship, right? Okay, here we go. Knowing him. No, right? Knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, complete man. Unto the measure. Oh, hey, Noah, make sure you build this boat with these dimensions. Measure this out exactly. It can't be any other way. Why do details matter? Why does the church say, oh, it doesn't really matter? Who really cares? God cares that we want it the way he wants it and not by our lackadaisical attitudes. Are you with me? Watch this. Unto the measure of the stature, right? Maturity. Did you hear that? What does this man look like? Right here. Here it is. Of the fullness. I like this word fullness. It literally means repletion or completion. Well, wait a minute. What's the difference? I didn't really ever look at this before, but there's a difference between perfect and complete or fullness. You and I can be perfect without being complete. Are you listening to me? Do you see the order here? Watch this. This word means repletion or completion, and it comes from a word. It means to make replete, which comes from a word. Watch this. Replete, covered over, um, complete or full. That comes from a word that means to accomplish, fill up, fulfill, furnish. See, we can be complete or perfect completion, perfect completion, right? That's what it said, at a certain stage. But it's a whole nother thing to come to accomplishment. Completion, fullness, filled up. When every single thing is filled up unto the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is all God ever wanted. And this is exactly why God says, look, if you worship Him, you must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not in flesh not in carnality, not in duality. Because if we do it in duality, do you know what we'll have? Look around. Look around. And listen, God's going to shake. God is shaking. But the interesting thing was this. Noah, it says, prepared. God's looking for a people who are preparing for the purpose. You know, it's kind of interesting. 
Matthew 24. The wars and rumors of wars. All these things were going on, weren't they? Are you listening to me? All these things were... Jesus said, take no heed that anybody deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying, I am a Christian. I am Christ. What's the difference? And shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are just the beginning of birth pangs. Then they'll deliver you up and be afflicted and kill you. And you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. Now watch this. I don't like your message. It bothers my flesh. Oh, now we wouldn't say that. And watch this. They'll betray one another. You know how you betray one another? When you don't get on board. 100%. With God, in spirit, and in truth. Are you with me? And hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold towards God. This is what happened, right? All the wickedness was towards God. The heathen rage. They imagine a vain thing. But he that endureth to the end, the fulfillment, the consummation, the same shall be saved. Noah walked right in the midst of all the troubled darkness of the evil day. And he stayed focused and stayed the course to build a man, an ark, a covenant, a people. And the cool thing that came out of that ark, if you look at it in a natural aspect, was it came forth and produced life once again in the earth. And what God is after is a pure, a holy seed, an incorruptible seed to come forth of the ark of his spirit, of his covenant, to bring life and abundant life and eternal life into the earth. Not to satisfy the flesh of man, but to satisfy the heart of God. The heart of God. All things were made by him and for him. Amen. Life like a river flows from the seed within us. And what God's trying to get you and I to understand is he is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. You know what? They asked, they, Jesus said this when they were talking to him, and this is what he said. He said, unless the days be shortened. They'll be shortened for the very elect's sake. Because if they're not shortened, are you with me? God's after something. God's out looking for God. Amen. We walk by faith and not by what we see and hear. We have to get up above, whether it's the church or the parallel universe of the world. You can't tell the difference. But Noah found grace. 
and he built according to the pattern. Unto the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is what God's after. Not a people who can bring forth winds of doctrine, but a people who can bring forth the life of Christ. Amen? Let's stand. Father, we thank You for Your life and Your Spirit. Father, we thank You for what You're doing in this day. Father, I pray that You continue to watch over Your seed, O God. Continue to protect. You said that nothing can pluck them out of Your hands. So, Father, I pray today, O God, this, this is my desire today, O God, that You would fulfill Your Word in our lives, O God. Let nothing hamper us, hinder us. Help us, O God, get ourselves out of the own, our own way, O God, that You can bring forth Your purpose and that your purpose can function to the design, intent of your heart. Fulfill your word in our lives, God. Fulfill your word in the earth, O oh God. Lord, you said you'll shake the heavens and the earth, that it will bring the desire of the nation. So God, I pray, fulfill your word in us so we can arise and shine with a substance of your spirit so that they can come and satisfy your desire that all nations, all people, would worship you. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Change our hearts, O oh God. Make them ever true. That, God, we may become those teachers, those intercessors. Father, your word says you look for a man and you found none. But God, Christ now is that man living in our lives. So God, let us rise up above. Walk on water. Walk on the sea. That the life of the Spirit of Christ will be completely known and seen in all the creation. And everybody says... Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.